Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today following last week's unboxings of both the new 2015 MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, I'm going to compare the two machines against one another. So which should you purchase, the thinner, cheaper MacBook Air or the slightly more expensive, slightly heavier MacBook Pro with improved specs and Apple's revamped trackpad? Let's find out. <laughs> Now to preface for details on my new iPhone 6 giveaway, rate this video up and stick around until the end. Now to start, we're going to run through some specifications and benchmark tests on Apple's latest MacBook refreshes following a quick boot up. Now although both of them are equipped with 128GB of onboard PCIe based flash storage, the MacBook Pro will actually boot ahead of the MacBook Air. Now looking at the specs, these are both the base 13 inch models, which will provide an accurate representation of the varying levels of performance as the two are corresponding models across both the Pro and Air MacBook lines. On the left, we have the less powerful Air, which features a 1.6 GHz dual core Intel Core i5 CPU with turbo boost up to 2.7 GHz and Intel's integrated HD Graphics 6000 as well as 4 GB of RAM. Now on the right, the base 13 inch MacBook Pro is powered by a 2.7 GHz dual core Intel Core i5 CPU with turbo boost up to 3.1 GHz and Intel's Iris Graphics 6100 as well as 8 GB of RAM. So we already have a processor that's 1.1 GHz or 41% faster, not counting turbo boost, better graphics capabilities, and double the RAM on the Pro. But let's use some tools to determine whether the spec improvements are nominal or provide significant performance boosts. We'll start with NovaBench, which evaluates a number of spec-related factors including processing power, graphics capabilities, storage read and write speeds, and more to provide a cumulative computing score that acts as a numeric representation of the computer's overall power, hence the term benchmark. Speeding this process along, we have a general score of 587 on the Air versus 732 on the Pro, with the significant jump being mostly attributed to the processor, while interestingly, they score about the same for the graphics test, processing 95 and 97 3D frames per second, with the latter of course being the Pro. Next, we'll look at the flash storage, which is indeed the same capacity on both, being 128GB. Using Blackmagic, it will write a file to the storage and in turn read it to assess the speed of both tasks. In theory, they should score the same seeing as they are the same capacity, right? Pretty much. After letting it run for a while, they both have write speeds between 630 to 640 megabytes per second and read speeds of around 1330 to 1340 megabytes per second. And now that we have the raw data out of the way, I'm going to conclude by briefly getting into the opinion portion of this comparison, starting with the base price of both being $999 and $1299 for the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro respectively. I personally think that if you're spending the money to buy a MacBook anyway, and if you can afford it, due to the combination of better specs on the Pro, the retina level resolution on the Pro, which the Air doesn't even come close to, as well as the completely revised trackpad, which is extremely cool, seeing as it doesn't click or move in any way like a traditional trackpad would, thanks to the same Taptic engine found in the upcoming Apple Watch, I think the more expensive MacBook Pro is the way to go. Plus, with the new MacBook Apple unveiled last week being thinner, lighter, and having a higher resolution than the Air, the machine is somewhat antiquated. Additionally, its footprint is actually larger than that of the MacBook Pro, which has an infinitely better design in my opinion. With that said, for me at least, the MacBook Pro is the clear winner. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments section, and for a chance to win a new iPhone 6, sign up with your iOS device at freeappsfast.com, download apps and return to this video, rate it up, and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section containing your referral code, the portion that appears after the link found in the fourth tab at the bottom. Now stay tuned for additional coverage on all of Apple's latest products, including next month's new MacBook. Like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter to be updated when I release new videos. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.